you pop your top and how you lose your cool and how you look at me too say why Hi my darlings and welcome back to another episode of Wine Wednesday. If you're new here, hi my name is Polly Kabasha. If you are a ten subscriber, hi doll and welcome back home. We are shooting Wine Wednesday today. I'm sorry that I haven't been on Wednesday for the past two weeks. I have been an absolute mess but you guys are going to know all about it on the vlog. Um, it's been crazy. <laughs> But we're here again to shoot another Wine Wednesday. If you do not know what Wine Wednesday is, it is a segment on my channel where I come and talk. Let me get comfortable, actually. Where I come and talk about all of your problems, clearly, because I don't have any. Yeah, Dala. But it's where I come and just have a cute, intimate setup or whatever with my darlings, where we talk about problem problems that you might have or I might have, you know. And I'm almost certain that. Um, when I answer one question, I'm all, like, I'm sure three people get answered, you know, because we can all be going through the same thing and we may not know. So one Wednesday is for that where we just get to share, you know, because I also love the fact that the conversation does not end just by me making a video. You guys also go out of your way to have like certain conversations on, um, sorry, on the comment section because I, I do read some of them where you guys touch on the things that we have just spoken about, you know. So that's actually very cool. And yeah, today is another day, another one Wednesday. Unfortunately, there is not a specific topic because I never want to do a specific topic because I just think it won't help other people in a sense of if you are going through something and then we're talking about friendship on that particular um, day, it does not help you necessarily, you know. So if I just pick every single other question that I see, I just feel like, okay, this one is going to work, then, you know, that's how I just see it as it should be done, right? So every Wednesday we have a certain wine that we're going to drink. I've drank this wine before and it knocks my socks off, okay? But I'm going to have it because I did not... Yeah, you guys will see all of it in the vlog. I've been going through it. <laughs> I wasn't able to leave the house. I haven't left the house in like a week. So yeah, um, you guys are going to see this wine again. But also if you have any wine recommendations for the girl, please do let me know. Only white wines because red wine goes straight to mine. And my man ain't here. <laughs> so if it's white wine, please do let me know. I also love the wine from Moody's. I'm going to go buy it tomorrow, actually. So, yeah. Today's wine is from Durbanville Hills Sauvignon Block. This wine, I was introduced to this wine by Yolanda, 12,000. You guys definitely do know her. She's the one that introduced me to this wine, and I've been hooked since. But I don't take her on any normal day, because this girl will drop by you, okay? So... Is this supposed to be this color? Mm? Why is it so strong? What is this? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Something's not right. What is happening? Guys, there was a time when me and Paul went out. Ne? We had this wine. And then I think, oh, I can't tell you guys the story. <laughs> oh, I remember. I remember. Now we have to change wines. We we have to change. Guys, let me go look for another wine. I remember what happened with this wine. I was with Paul. Oh, my God. Let me go change this wine. I'll come back. <laughs> I need to call him. Oh, my God. So it seems we are definitely having red wine. <laughs> um, I don't have any white wine. I'm gonna stock up tomorrow. So we're having the pecan. Oh, this is long. Pecan, pecanier Scruff 2019 Grenache wine of South African Moros, something like that. Something, something. So I don't know where I got this wine from, guys. One thing about me, I buy red wine all the time, and I don't buy white. I don't know why, but yeah. This is the wine we're having today. I hope you have your glass with you and you are ready for us to begin. But before we even start, clink, clink, my love. <laughs> so, today's questions, I randomly picked them, of course. Um, 
um, these were all from you, my darling submissions from you, my darling. But also, please just know that also all of these are anonymous. I don't say people's names. I don't, you know, I don't go out of my way to talk about anything that you guys say to anybody. This stays with me. Your secrets are the safe thing. I swear to God. <laughs> okay, so the first one is my boyfriend is always. Oh, and by the way, a little disclaimer. I always answer questions that I feel like I resonate with in a sense of I answer from a personal standpoint. I never just want to answer questions. That's why sometimes you're going to look at, you're going to be like, but why do you never read my questions? Because I read it and I did not resonate with it because I've never gone through it. I never want to give people information that I've never gone through. I never want to give people advice that I've never gone through, you know. So every time that I answer a question, just know that I've gone through the same thing and I'm answering from a personal standpoint because I want to give you information that is solid, information that I know that I know what I'm talking about, right? So I can't come here and someone is asking me about marriage and I think I can answer a question about marriage. No, babe, I can't do that because I'm not married and I wouldn't know what happens in marriages. But if you come here and ask me about a relationship, trust and believe I'll answer it because I definitely know I am the in one. Do you get me? So, yeah. The first one is, um, my boyfriend is always quick to walk away when I do wrong, but when I do the same, he gets mad. Please help. Guys, this is me, right? I'm the boyfriend in this situation. I'm her boyfriend. Because one thing about me, I, I always used to say I love confrontation, funny enough. And if, if my ex would, would reply to this, exes rather, they tell you that I always confront you, but when I feel like it's getting heated, I'll get up and leave. <laughs> I won't be mad, but I'll just get up and leave. I think... I always think I can confront the situation and it's going to be better. But when it doesn't get better, that's when I'm just like, okay, I don't think I can handle the situation the way I thought I could. And then now I just go and run because I'm just like, I can't handle what's currently going on in my life. Sorry, guys. My hair is just doing shakara for me to not. Like, what's happening, babe? This HD frontal. But yeah, I always used to think that I can handle situations or I can talk about something. I actually can't talk about it because I don't think I'm equipped as yet in a sense of, um, I don't know how to tackle situations, especially in a relationship because I haven't, I don't want to say I haven't healed from past trauma, but it also like contributes to it. Do you know what I'm saying? When we haven't been in healthy relationships and then your partner says, let's talk about something, you feel like it's an attack. Maybe your partner feels the same way. Because with me, I always feel like you're going to attack me. So, but when you do something wrong and I tell you, and then you tell me how you felt, how it made you feel, and I'm just like, hmm, are you attacking me? So maybe your partner feels the same way, you know? Um, and it's something that you need to talk about and be like, whenever you do something, I sit down and I'm just like, okay, you did one, two, three, and it didn't, it didn't treat me well. And then, but when I do something, you get mad and, you know, so sit him down and tell him about it. Sometimes it's just triggers for all of us. And as much as women, I'm like, oh my God, I'm triggered. I have PTSD. <gasps> Men have them too. Men get triggers as well. Men have also been in unhealthy, in unhealthy relationships where they get triggers as well. Him, you going to him and asking him something, you are triggering him because that's something that his ex used to do or something like that. This is why, guys, in relationships, we have to be patient with each other. Oh, babe, if there's one thing, like, I am eternally grateful for my man right now because that man is a patient, tall, dark, chocolate something. My man is patient as shit with me. But also, I, I cannot, to an extent, take advantage of that patience. I have to work on myself as well to be like, okay, cool. And as much as he's patient, I also need to work on myself so that he doesn't get impatient, you know? So, sit your mind down and tell him what he's doing, you know? And then if there's no change in that, then I don't know. But, like, I just feel like if he's your man and he understands what's happening, he'll literally just listen to you, okay, and be like, okay, I want to fix stuff instead of him just always getting up and be mad just because. Do you get me? So yeah, sit him down, let him know how you feel, and let him know that whenever we get into an argument, it's not a fight. So whenever we get into like our differences, it's not a fight. It's just us fixing what couples would, would normally fix. Do you get me? So yeah, I hope that helps you. Sorry guys, if you hear any sound from the first question, just know that it was my inverter and I just switched it off. But I just hope that answers your first question. Hmm. Clink. Which is very good. Okay, the next one is, I'm at a point in my life where I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Have you ever felt like this? Yes. 
yes 2020 2020 okay 2015 16 17 2018 2019 2019 i was going through the absolute most i had i had to choose between do i want to go home or do i want to like pursue my career in being an influencer in in whatever i was staying in sunny side in the three bedroom apartment with how many people were there one two three four five with five people i was the sixth person in a three bedroom apartment in sunny side was it called brooklyn heights something like that i said to myself i'm going to fight i don't want to go home i really don't want to go home to my speak there's nothing for me there you know so I told myself that in as much as my life is stagnant right now, things do get better. They actually do get better, but you also have to put the work in it. You can't be like, oh my God, things are bad, but you're sitting back. You don't know what to do. Things do get better. Try something. Do something with your hands. If you feel like you're good with your hands, you know, do people's hair. Like, do lashes. Go, go. In as much as I'm saying do lashes, it's hard because you don't have the means. You don't have the finances. But also, it's okay to take some time out to realize what you really do want to do. You get me? I think this also goes back to people that are still in varsity that don't know what they want to do, that are still doing, sorry, my trick, that don't know what they do, don't know what they want to do with their lives. I would highly suggest taking a gap year because that would help you know yourself better to be like, okay, cool, I've taken my, a gap year. In that gap year, I think you should do things that make you happy, things that excite you, and then that's when you're going to pick up to be like, okay, actually, I like drawing. Why don't I go draw? I just hope your parents actually say yes because one thing about black parents, you'll tell them you like to draw. I thought, you, not with my money going to varsity to go through you get me so i just think you should sit down and 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 maybe write the things that make you happy in a sense of just like me i remember when i sat down um that was after i left the 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 what's the 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 law firm right um, I was still a hostess at Vanity, but I didn't like it because, hey guys, the nightlife was just insane. But also, I just thank God that I went through that because I think, hadn't I gone through that, I would be partying my life away at the ten, at, ooh, tender age. I'm not at the tender age. I'm getting very old. I'd be partying my life away at 28, you know. I'm 28 years old, 20, 29. So I would be, yeah, it's, it's the perfect age to be doing that, but I think I'm over it because I did it so much. Do you get me? But I sat down and I was like, what are the things that make me happy? What are the things that I like? I started doing lashes. It didn't work out. I started a makeup thingy. It didn't work out. Even now, I started the whole dime head thing. It didn't work out because I'm just constantly busy. And I feel like I finally found my passion, which is YouTube. I don't have time for anything else. I don't have time to be doing people's hair. I don't have time to be washing people's wigs. I just don't have time for all of those things. I have time for YouTube, you know. When I'm not YouTubing, I'm doing like um, I'm at home sitting and resting because I need it. But all of these things failed for me to actually finally get to something that I actually wanted to do and actually succeeded. So I think pen down the things that you'd like to do. Some of them may be a failure. Some of them are going to be successful. But don't stop until you find that one thing to be like, okay, cool. This I love and I'm going to pursue for real. Because when I was doing YouTube like 2021, it wasn't as serious as it, as it is now. Because 2020. Wait, yeah, 2021, it was, it was like hair reviews. I didn't even do vlogs. I didn't do sit-downs. It was just hair reviews and gossip. And I was just like, oh, I'm over it. I mean, I'm evolving as a creator. You get what I'm saying? So all of those things that I wrote down and I wanted to do and I actually did and it didn't succeed finally led me to be like, okay, cool. I'm going to do YouTube. And I did what? And I succeeded. So write the things that um, you feel like you want to do. And, and as much as you feel like you're stagnant, because like you said, um, you feel like you don't know what you're doing, write the things down that you feel like you want to do. And like I said, some of them will be a success. A success a, wow! Some of them will be a success. Some of them will not. But you're going to finally find that one thing that you want to do and it's definitely going to take off for you, you know. So, but also be patient with yourself. Like being patient with ourselves helps us to literally see. Because when you rush things, that's when things just collapse. You know, because I rushed my things. I was like, okay, cool. Lashes, it didn't work out. The next month, I went to, 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 what's this, to here. And then this, and then this, it didn't, it didn't work out for me. So with YouTube, I took my time. If you know, my channel is more than four years old. I literally just started posting in 20, 2021 or 2020. I don't remember properly. So take your time to evaluate the things that you love 
and then if they don't work out just keep on keeping on until you find something that works for you and then you just like okay cool but if not then take time take your time there's no rush in as much as people are, are rushing you you look at social media you see your peers are uh, doing whatever they're doing at some point they also felt like oh my god what am i doing with my life until they found something that they love so everybody's going through something guys one thing you should know is please don't envy people on social media oh my god do not even envy us content creators there's a lot that goes on behind closed doors. You guys see a finished product. You guys see me doing Wine Wednesday. You didn't see the lights. You didn't see the cameras. You didn't see me charging this battery. You didn't see me take this memory card, put it here. My laptop is literally sitting right here and I'm busy working, you know? So don't see our lives and be like, oh my God, oh my God. We had to work for some, well, personally for me, I worked for some of these things. No, when you're with the buffer, you but I worked for my, you guys know, I've never lied about my life. In general, I was, I work hard every day no i do work hard you guys see my work don't sit there and say you don't see my work yeah what i'm saying do i'm mad i'm letting it in i shall and that's that's on that okay thanks thanks <coughs> okay the next one is when your libido is low how do you communicate it with your partner and make them understand guys when it comes to sex in a relationship communication is everything actually when it comes to anything in a relationship communication is everything let's start there communication is everything when it comes to a relationship because if you don't like something you communicate it with your partner no i think that's when people go out and cheat because they're not getting something at home but they still love you they don't want to leave you do you get what I'm saying? So I just feel communication. Sit your man down and be like, babe, my libido is low. Do you what do you think should we suggest to do in order for it to be higher? What do you think we what do you suggest we do for you to help me get there? You get what I'm saying? So that you can be you can be better. I mean, if you as my man come to me and be like, babe, my libido is low, I'd be like, okay, cool, let's go to the men's clinic, you know? Or maybe let's introduce toys in the relationship, you know. Or maybe you drink something, you know, or, you know, let's do something together. Because just because the sex is not great doesn't mean I must get up and go. Like, let's talk about it. Let's fix it first before I can actually be like, I go. I've tried. Marawana mangi sing in the style and let's son. Ufnak bega niya wala mpasi. No. Mine ufnak bega niya wala the side. Do you know? So, and I also feel like the nastier it is... Also, the more you guys know each other, the more you guys know each other's body, that's where the nasty it is. Okay? Don't. That's on her. That is on her. So, communication in a relationship is very, 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 very important. When you sit your partner down to tell them about your frustrations, I feel like that's 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 where they should be, even be happy that you are that open enough to talk about situations that you want to fix, you know, with your partner. And him or her, you help each other in a sense of, let's fix it together. I, I don't have a high libido. What do you think you suggest we do? You know, help me help you. Because if I help you, the sex is fire. It's a win-win situation. Do you get me? Exactly. <laughs> the next one is, how do you manage to keep your friendship so pure and full of love? Guys, I, you can take this however you want to take it. But I love friendships so much because I grew up being the only child. You know? And I feel like I found people that I can actually call my sisters crazy enough that's why i absolutely adore and love my friendships and i respect my friendships that's why when someone just I mean like guys just know whenever you see someone that i don't talk to anymore i don't care what anybody's what no one says they wronged me i have never in my life wronged anybody especially when it comes to friendships i go above and beyond my friendship my friends will tell you one thing about me i believe in friendships so much so if you don't see me with somebody please just know Hi, Shem, you can say whatever you want. I can say that with my chest. Just know. And then the thing with me, guys, I believe in continuously giving people chances in a sense of, let's fix it, my boy. What, what is wrong? Like, why don't you, what am I doing that you don't like? What are you doing that I don't like? You know what I'm saying? But if I say something more than three times or I see what's I will, there's no change. There's really no need for us to keep doing this. You know what I'm saying? So the only way that I keep my friendships pure is communication seeing each other often you know in as much as i can't and the funny thing is i hardly see my best friend but that girl has been my best friend for more than five years i hardly see the circle you guys you people hardly see her anywhere on these vlogs because i hardly see her and when i do see her we don't even bring the camera like that because obviously there's there's, there's my daughter 
so I don't have my daughter to be seen. But communication and friendships, always being there for each other and always being truthful, I believe in that so much. I believe in it. Also love, guys. Love is so important in friendship. Reminding your friends every single day that you love them is literally the most important thing ever. Whenever you hang up a phone call, dog, I love you. That, that goes a long way. You know, that goes a super, super long way. So that's why my friendships are just full of love and everything because I put my all into them. Like, that's why if you wrong me, my boy, we can't come back from that because you have wronged me. And that's why I'm saying every friend that you don't see me with, just know that they've wronged me. I never wrong anybody because I believe in friendship. I grew up alone. That's why I believe in friendship because it's like it's a sisterhood. Do you get me? So, yeah. That's how I keep my friendships alive, by loving, by communicating, by being there for each other constantly. But if I feel like I'm doing more and you're doing the bare minimum, I'll first, I'll first tell you about to be like, dog, I just feel like I'm going above and beyond for this friendship, but you're not meeting me halfway. And if that person does not decide to meet you halfway after you've spoken about it, then dip. Dip. Like, you can't be sitting in a friendship that's unhealthy. Dip, right? Uh, the next one is, they say sometimes you date out of your type, but I'm not really sure. Please advise me. Okay, wait. The, the, this, this is for, this, she says, hi, auntie. I've been in a toxic relationship my whole life. Now, I finally found someone who actually loves me and treats me like a princess, but he's really not my type. They say you should date out of your type, but I'm not really sure. Please advise me. Guys, this whole type thing, you know, sometimes type, sometimes the type doesn't even come as tall, dark, and handsome. Some people can look past it, some people can't. The funny thing is, I'm, I'm saying this because I have never not dated my type. Like, my type is tall, dark, a young mkaba, you know? A little mkaba right there to be like, guys, I, I love, I oh, y'all should see my man. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. What a man. What, what a man. Oh, y'all should see my... Y'all won't see him, but y'all should see him. Y'all should see my... Y'all won't see him, but you should see him. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus! Jesus Christ! Hmm? Wow. My, my type has always been tall, dark, handsome, young, and cover. And I, ever since, that's the level that I've gone to, ever since. There's only just two people that have, I, I think that's why it didn't work out, because yay, <laughs> what a fuck, <laughs> you know? So, but let, let me let me be honest and completely honest and completely serious. Um, honestly speaking, there's this thing where they say that you can learn to love somebody. And I strongly believe in it. You definitely can learn to love somebody. And as much as you say your type is, is this, your type is that, but if somebody comes and treats you the way that you want to be treated, I'm almost certain you look past that. You de- If ukulele and you're mature and you're just like, this is what I want. Guys, the, I saw something. Um, I think it was Madea. She said that someone will come and they're 80% of everything that you wanted. And then there's that 20% that they don't have. And then you go looking for that 20% somewhere else. And then you actually do find it. To only find out that person doesn't have the 80% that you need. So you took 20% for 80%? Come on. Come on. Come on. Do you get me? You can't risk 20% for 80%. You can't risk looks for someone who treats you like a queen. This is this is my personal standpoint. Some people can can deviate from this and be like, I know, I mean, it looks like everything. I need to look at my man and salivate and see something scrumsh, dilayam, dam, scum, dilayam, guanyi, or washawash. Something, yes. But personally, come on, you can't outweigh 80 with 20. So choose your battles carefully. I'm not going to, I think this is my answer. 20% is the looks. 80% is how he treats you, how he worships the ground that you walk on, how he looks at you, how he loves you, how he listens to you, how he adores you, how he worships you. And then the 20% is looks. Come on. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, really, Ramapos, really, really, you want to look at Guzi. See, even my glasses is, is full. And then when I, I put a drop here, you want to lick the drop instead of taking this and drinking it. Come on. That's my answer. I'm not even going to go into this. Please, come on. Like, let's ask cooling. Let's just be mature about this. 
that 80 20 ratio should just tell you everything that you need to know personally personally okay the next one is let's talk about how being single gets lonely but still can't just settle for anything baby i love this so much being single gets so lonely like being single gets so lonely guys i don't want to lie to you you just sit there and you're just like damn dog i miss being in love and, and don't get me wrong the time when i was single for two years i was just like damn dog i miss being in love but the fact that i can leave my house at 12 o'clock go to the club come back i don't call anybody to be like babe can i go can i come i'm li ah! that one was really the, you know you know i think the freedom of being single sometimes is really nice and you actually do miss it when you're in a relationship i don't want to lie to you and such and be like you don't miss the freedom of being you do you do but now because you constantly have to communicate with somebody because you'll be talking to your boyfriend and i'll be like babe i'm at home Chiki chiki, so happy. Let's just tap in. Oh, oh, I didn't know that you you are single. You know, so sometimes being single is actually nice, but you also do miss being in a relationship. But I just think enjoy it, enjoy being single, because once you're in a relationship, obviously you will miss the things that you used to do. But guys, there's nothing for us in the streets. <laughs> there's nothing for you in the streets. Leave them as soon as you can. Absolutely, just get out and leave the streets as soon as you can because there's nothing for us there, you know. So, yeah, personally, I just think be single and just chill, enjoy yourself, enjoy your life, do everything that you want to do, love yourself harder so that when you get into a relationship, you don't settle for anything that you don't like. That may come in it's half, you don't want it, you don't want half as love. You don't want inconsistency. You don't want the bare minimum because you've been doing all of these things for yourself and you love yourself. So, guys, loving yourself to an extent where you won't settle for anything, that is the power that I wish for any, any, and every other woman. You know, loving yourself to a point where when something comes in its list and what you know, you're just like, mm -hmm, this is not for me. This is not for, this is not for me. This is not for me. You know, so be single, my babes. Being single is amazing. I love it. I, well, I loved it. And I love being in a relationship. I would not trade it for anything. But be single so that when you're ready to be in a relationship, it's nothing short or nothing less of what you have told yourself that you want your relationship to be. You know, the boundaries, like I said, the inconsistency, the whatever. If it's, you just be like, this is not for me. And you are so happy to get out of it because you know nothing less. You Everything that you know, you've given yourself. So be single for as long as you can and enjoy it. Because once your relationship comes, you must communicate, you must tell someone you are leaving the house with your own car. Yo. <laughs> you know? So yes, enjoy being single. Because you'll get into a relationship. You will. Alrighty. The next one is when to realize that a friendship is no longer serving you and how to initiate the conversation. Guys, the funny thing is with, with friendships, I, I've never sat down and ended a friendship. Personally, I've never sat down and ended a friendship. The only thing that I did was, I think if a friendship is not for you, you guys just part ways and never talk again. With the with the friendships that I've had and they had a fallout, a fallout, sorry, I first communicated my feelings with the person and then after that, I just feel like, I'm actually wasting my time. It's it's I admit. Let's 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 call it quits. I won't say anything. I'll just keep it moving personally. Honestly speaking, I'll just keep it moving because I just feel like once you communicate something once and that person decides that they don't want to change, what's the point of doing it all over again? Do you get me? You're talking with a grown ass adult who knows what they're doing is wrong and after that after you've communicated it, they know what they're doing is wrong, but they still insist on doing it, then you're wasting my time, you know? So Personally, for me, I believe in communication. So communicate your feelings at first. Hear what they have to say. Let them hear what you have to say. And then if it continues or persists, then what's the point of you being in the relationship or the friendship? It's not working. And the funny thing is we are so scared to lose friends because you're just like, you've worked hard to build. It's the same thing as, as relationship. You've worked hard to build this thing. And then now it comes crumbling down and you're just like, what the hell happened? What the hell did I do? But sometimes you have to realize that people are in your life for a season, you know, for a season, for a reason. <laughs> See what I did there? For a season and for a reason. Someone may come into your life to just help you understand or help you learn how to stop communicating, you know, because 
I feel like I've every and also every relationship or friendship, it's never in vain. There's always a lesson to that. I don't care what anybody says. All the friendships that I've lost, all the relationships that I've lost have taught me something. There's no way a friendship or relationship that ends will not teach you something. I'm going to make a prime example. Say maybe you dated an ex and that ex used to love what? Used to love talking, communicating. You're not used to communicating. That's when you feel like, I go, no, young kid, like, every day there's a fight. And then you change, if you put it in your head, how do I say this in English? If you are badling, how do I say this in English? Oh, fuck. If, if you are a grown-ass human being and your partner sits you down to be like, I don't like what you do, one, two, three. I think in your head, in your hearts of hearts, you're going to be like, okay, cool. This person doesn't like what I'm doing. Instead of them just ending the relationship, they're sitting me down and they're saying, babe, I don't like one, two, three. That should say something to you. You get what I'm saying? And then even if that relationship doesn't end, you have learned to communicate because that person taught you communication. No. No. Exactly. So every relationship and every friendship, guys, you are going to learn something. Irregardless of it ends well, it ends bad, you are going to learn something. You know what I'm saying? So with my previous relationship, it showed me that I will not compromise in date nights or, or you planning something for us. Or you surprising me with gifts. Because that's my love language. Gifts, date nights, surprises. is my love language. Because one thing about me, guys, I will spoil my man. Ooh. 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 One thing I believe in spoiling my man. I believe in it so much. Guys, men get so, so, so cute when you buy them something. Ooh. They get so cute when you buy them stuff. They don't know what to do with themselves. Even if you buy them socks, they are the most cutest human beings ever. So, every relationship is there to teach you a lesson. Every relationship happens for a reason, and you're going to learn a lesson. Trust and believe. There's no way a friendship is going to come and go. There's no way a relationship is going to come and go, and you didn't learn anything from it. You are a liar. You are a liar. So, I just, I, I just really think that um, you should sit down and talk about it. And if it doesn't change, then that's when you know that you should keep it moving. That's all I can tell you, you know? Yeah. The next one is, totally, I'm dating someone. We are both students. He treat me well, but I want more, like, financially. I don't know what to do. Guys, if you are in high school or you are in college, you need to date in your in your age range, in your age range, no? And also, you can't expect somebody that's in high school to take care of you financially, like you did, Chris. He's been taken care of by his parents. So how do you expect him to take care of you? Unless you want to go out there and date a sugar daddy, I'm not stopping none of you. Don't think I'm stopping. I'm not stopping any of you. I'm almost certain if he was going to be the sugar without, he was going to be the daddy without the sugar, you would love it so much. But the daddies want the sugar. And you have to give them sugar. So it's basically like you're paying for the things that they're doing for you. Whereas in a relationship, it's mutually beneficial. You get me? Also, with the, with the sugar daddy, it is beneficial to him as well. But I just feel like you can't expect somebody who's in college to come and give you 5000 every month when his parents are giving him 5000 every month to take care of himself. And when if he takes that five and he gives you two, you'd be like, wow, he actually does love me. But you can't expect him to give you all the five. He has to dress himself, he has to buy groceries, take books, I boo. So if you can't be dating in your age range, then go find somebody who's going to take care of you and that person is older. Because which other person is going to be able to take care of you and they're in school with you? So I don't know, my babe, what you actually want. Do you want money from this person or you want a relationship? Because from what it seems from me, you definitely want money because you can't expect somebody who is in high school, who is doing their first year or in college or varsity to take care of you. They are still taking care of him at home. What do you want? Guys, sometimes you put unnecessary pressure on these men, hey? Fuck. We really, really do, and we need to stop because it doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. So, like I said, either you decide to date in your age range or go find yourself somebody who's going to take care of you because you can't expect somebody who's in varsity to take care of you. It doesn't work like that. It really doesn't. No. The last one is, hi, I've noticed whenever I have sex with my boyfriend, my vagina stinks. Um, 
I've been to the doctors and it's not an infection. We do shower together before we get into it, but I've concluded it's his. Hey, hey, man, it's his and it's his un uncircumcised. Like, how do I convince him to do that, or is it his body, his rules? <sighs> Hey. Hey, bye. You know what? Hey, hey, it's just <laughs> because why are you not uncircumcised, you uncircumcised Philistine? I'm joking, but okay, let's be serious. But I'm just, you know what? No. I think at our hey. I've never experienced this. But I've experienced vaginal odor because I was with somebody and we actually broke up because of this. They, my, my, my pH balance was in hell every single time I was with him. Every single time without fail, my pH balance was in hell. Guys, I would be walking and I'd be stinking. And if you know me, you know me, guys. I'm I'm a I'm the cleanest human being at 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 I I ever came across. Okay. I love to smell good. I love to clean good. I love I I'm a, I'm the cleanest human being ever. So if someone is gonna come and make my pH balance off, I'm, I'm I can't do that. So if anything, I, I don't I've never experienced this, but I'm going to answer it the the best of my you know. I just honestly think you need to sit and sit him down and tell him that this the fact that you guys went to the doctor together nah my boy he needs he needs the wake up call because there's actually no ways you know you have to sit him down and be like my ph balance is off because of you my ph my ph balance is in hell because of you okay like, do not think that you are the problem and the thing is if it happens every single time after sex then you know for a fact that it's him you know and the thing is with women's ph balance you, you, there's no lying there. I mean, every single time. And the, the thing is, it's going to be there for like a week because you need to understand that men's semen lost in a woman's body for a week or their vagina or whatever for a week before it actually everything comes out. You know what I'm saying? So imagine you're smelling for a whole week. Guys, I would, I would stay at home for a week because my pH balance was off. And it wasn't the normal, it was like a fish. And there was no STD, no STI, nothing, because I went to go test it for all of these things. Nothing was there. It's just that that man semen would throw my pH balance off. Or whichever, you know? So I was just like, uh-uh. So that obviously with your partner, you guys are you, you guys are open with each other and be like, okay, you're going to use protection or not? So there's one day where I was like, okay, let's use protection. We use protection. Was my pH balance not? So... If he's going to be like, uh-uh, I can't, uh, yeah, I'm not going to get circumcised, then I don't know. That means he has to spend 10 minutes, more minutes in the shower, showering, because you are a guys. See my dollar at this point. If you're going to sit him down and be like, babe, my pH balance is a mess because of you, and he doesn't listen, then I suggest that you get the step in. Because there's no way, as a grown-ass adult, you're not going to understand that your, your, your foreskin is throwing my pH balance off. You know what I'm saying? But also sometimes it's not actually the foreskin, it's just him as an individual. What is he eating? Are he, is he eating fruits? Is he drinking pineapple juice? What is he doing? So you need to get to the core of this, but I'm 100% sure that he needs to get circumcised. There's actually no way he needs to get circumcised because now your pH balance is going to be... Imagine if you have to go to people and you're smelling... You guys, when your pH balance is off, you're going to smell like a fish. It's a fucking aquarium down there, dog. What? Don't play with that. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. It's an aquarium. Museum. Yeah, aquarium. David Mishaka Marine World. What? No. Don't play with your pH balance like that. There's actually noise. 
if he doesn't think that this is a serious thing, then I guess on it's bye. Bah. I can't do it. I really can't do it. I said bye to our relationship because I will my pH balance never. I can't do that to myself. I'm gonna give me a new fish when you say like I like on Raja Christian Dua. No. 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 So either he decides it's okay he's gonna get in the, and and uh, he's gonna get the circumcision done or I get stepping because I can't smell because of you. You know? Or change your diet or do something, you know. Or just use a condom. But what happens if you guys want to be serious now and you guys want to have kids when are you nuga bila koyo gel kwai? No. 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 So you need to get circumcised, sir. You need to get circumcised. <laughs> or else this relationship is over. Coming over, it's over. You know? So I hope that answers you. But yeah, um, with that being said, I hope you guys do enjoy this week's Wine Wednesday. It's been nothing short of amazing. Absolute bliss every time I'm with you guys. Sending Natsis and Natsis and Jala says and you. But um, I hope you guys do enjoy it. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. When I don't forget, I'm going to subscribe. Lay lightning, like shy up. You say that I'm push up. You also want to pass a little bit. I'm going to make shy exempted because you're not subscribing. But um, I hope you guys do enjoy this week's one Wednesday. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. With that being said, clink, bitches. Bye, my love.